Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures. Today we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of different types of technologies you can use to monitor your network and your endpoints. Now, I used to run Tenable Network Security. I was the CEO, and some of our biggest customers would scan millions of computers on a weekly, if not daily basis. And they would scan it using network interrogation, where they put protocols and packets on the wire and got responses back. They would actually use authentication, where they would log into an endpoint, like a Windows computer with maybe admin privileges or a specific scanning account designed to assess the endpoint. And then lately, the last decade or so, many Tenable customers really deployed agents. And the agent was resident software that would report vulnerabilities, assets, and configs, you know, back to the cloud. And today in 2024, we see a lot of combinations of these tools. We see a lot of agents that are deployed out there. Some of these agents could be kernel level, just look at activity. Some of these agents could be heavy agents that that do things like hunt malware and deploy software. Uh, some of these agents could even scrape memory. So if you if you have a complex operating system like a Windows computer, a Linux computer, or a Mac computer, and you put one of these heavy agents on it, you should be able to get a lot of information out of it. And I always talk to people who are like, well, you know, can I do the same thing without an agent? Is there a way to just do it and log in? Now, again, from my experience at Tenable, you can basically do the same thing because it ultimately comes down to the fact you can upload something called a dissolvable agent. So if you can imagine running a piece of software as an agent that can sit there and look at your computer, I I can probably get that same agent on there as a dissolvable agent. So it can go in, it can do its thing, and then when it's done, it just deletes itself. Maybe it installs as a service, removes itself on the way out, and that's the way it works. And we're seeing a lot of different technology like this. As a matter of fact, Google Tech Adventures just invested in a company called Sandfly, which is an agentless Linux malware detection tool. They actually SSH into your endpoints and they uh, they they upload a dissolvable agent. They look for backdoors such that Linux BPF uh, backdoor and then they, uh, they, they disconnect and get out of there with leaving no evidence behind. Now, why would you want software agents versus a dissolvable agent? Well, it could be different things. A lot of times these dissolvable agents, they're kind of designed to run outside of the cloud and in private data centers and that sort of thing. And a lot of times... People who don't want to use cloud-based EDR, MDR, they don't do it because they don't want to connect to the cloud, and there's sort of no on-prem version of those uh, those offerings. But there's other ways you can do agentless detection of, of an endpoint. If your complex operating system is running inside VMware, uh, if it's a, uh, a container that's running on top of uh, Kubernetes, that sort of thing, there's a lot of ways to monitor those agents, get asset inventory, get uh, a statistical anomaly detection, get indicators of compromise out of that by directly working with uh, the VMware infrastructure and so on. And there's a lot of tools that are able to do these assessments of an endpoint and keeps your endpoint nice and nice and clean. Now, the cool thing about clean endpoints is that if you have repeatable builds, if you have gold standards and somebody comes in and puts in a backdoor, it's pretty easy to see that one registry section or that spare file running in the temp directory that nobody else has. And it sort of stands out like a sore thumb. So there's a lot of pros and cons to deploying these agents in different types of technologies. I think my favorite pitch I ever got, though, was when I got a pitch from from Carbon Black. Obviously, Carbon Black really helped create the EDR, MDR market. And they simply said, look, we're just going to come out with a sensor. And first time I heard sensor, I was thinking back Dragon and network detection and that sort of stuff. And they said, no, this is a kernel sensor. And I said, oh, that's an agent. But they were really pretty committed to a highly stable kernel monitoring system that could give you the telemetry. And it turned out that they were right. And the whole industry was more or less created on uh, on that type of concept. Now, speaking of network monitoring, I'm a big fan of using network monitoring as another way to monitor um, you know, what's going on in those endpoints. First of all, maybe you can't ping everything. And if you don't know about something, you're not going to be able to deploy software on it. But from a large scale WAN point of view, if you can get network traffic, there's a lot of technologies you can deploy doing that. First of all, most network IDSs, most network IPSs will do an inventory. They'll gather ARP addresses, DNS names, that sort of thing that you can cross-reference with your vulnerability data. But at the same time, if you have a dedicated asset discovery system, so for example, at Tenable, we had something called the Passive Vulnerability Scanner, which is now the Nessus Network Monitor. This would look at network traffic and it would basically do a vulnerability scan on that traffic. Literally, some of the same rules we had in Nessus 
we could run with the passive vulnerability scanner and basically discover host, enumerate hosts, enumerate vulnerabilities, and so on. Now, just like with a vulnerability scanner, if you don't have an agent, you have to get credentials. With a passive scanner, if you really want to get into the network traffic, you've got to get break and inspect deployed where you can actually look inside the TLS traffic and do a little bit more protocol dissection, whether it's going to uh, Gmail, doing a software update, that, that sort of thing. The data you can get from a passive sensor is it rivals what you can get from an endpoint. Uh, and even if you can't deploy them in, uh, you know, close to your endpoints, you're sitting behind network address translation firewalls and sitting behind proxies, that sort of thing, it's still an evidence collector. So let's say you think your vulnerability management program has eradicated an old version of Java. Well, if you have a passive sniffer out there, you can sniff for that old version of Java and sort of prove that it's not, uh, it's not on the network anymore. So it's pre pretty good to be able to do that. Now, when we start talking about OT devices and, uh, and, and mobile devices, it's a little, little bit different. Passive network monitoring, vulnerability scanning, they will identify things that they can, but a lot of mobile devices don't have open ports and they're just not pingable. And it's uh, what, what they do show up with network traffic. So it's pretty easy from a passive point of view to find an iPhone, to find a camera, to find that sort of thing. But there's so many different types of, of vendors who reuse libraries. It's very possible that you might have bought a brand new Dell camera for security monitoring, and when it connects on the internet, it gets detected as whatever OEM chipset that they uh, that they monitor. So there's a couple things that are going on with uh, with with the OT. So first of all, a lot of organizations are mandating this concept called SBOM, Software Bill of Materials, and that is if I buy something, I can at least know what was going on on the inside. And the theory is that if I buy a bunch of, let's just call them, uh, you know, we'll say Dell cameras again, that sort of thing, or Cisco, you know, IP phones on the desktop, right? That you at least get a list of the software that goes into that phone. And when I say software, I'm talking about libraries, version levels, that kind of thing. And if you have an SBOM for all that software, you can then map sort of what you have with the vulnerabilities that you're uh, aware about. And this is a different type of vulnerability management where you're basically playing a paper trail. And so there's, there's products out there that can automate this, where you're basically looking at the SBOMs and the libraries of the products that you have. And then if you do have an alert, you can you know go back and see if there's a, a patch that's applied and or maybe you can decide to uh, prevent you know, that protocol from being exploited by segmenting the, these computers on the network and, and so on. Now, when you get to mobile phones, it's a little bit more complex because you have the mobile phones, you have this concept of a mobile device manager, you have an MDM. So if you're an enterprise organization and you tell your employees, hey, look, just BYOD, bring your own device, you're on your own, but you can connect it to corporate email, that's that's a strategy that a lot of people do, but most of the times they're going to want to actually manage a corporate device and put policies and applications and in some cases extra levels of security on these phones. So an MDM is something that's used to uh, manage your fleet of uh, iPads, Apple devices, Apple phones, Google, uh, 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 Google Androids, that that sort of thing. But what happens with these MDMs is that a lot of times they uh, are just not, you don't get the same level of forensics ability that you do as the same, like I said before about carbon black or a patch management system, right? They're not designed to do a full assessment of those endpoint devices that are running mobile operating systems like iOS and, uh, and Android. So the question is, what can you do? Now, there's actually been some progress out there. There's a company called iViz that is actually working on detecting backdoors that uh, you know the NSO group uses and that that sort of thing, and they've made some progress there. The only real way to audit an, an iPhone or an Android or a, like, like a Chromebook or something like that with uh, for true forensics is you you really got to get it into a lab and dump the files down there. And I think there's going to be more progress this year on companies who can come out with solutions to do that type of monitoring. Uh, you're not seeing anybody who's doing hunt on phones right now. Like that's really what the industry is missing, and I think there's some going to be some progress there. Now, something that does blend both mobile devices and desktops, though, is this concept of a browser plugin. Now, an Android uh, phone's got Chrome. You know, uh, Apple devices have Safari, and you can actually put prox or uh, uh, plugins in each of these uh, web browsers. And these plugins can do a number of things. They can help you uh, track what that phone is doing. They can also help you do uh, some inventory. And they can also do a variety of uh, mitigations, whether it's uh, you know enforcing updates 
are actually uh, trying to actually prevent people from going to places that could get them fished. Gula Tech Adventures has an investment in this space called Conceal. Conceal offers a, a browser plugin that allows you to uh, surf the internet. And within the browser, basically, you know, you get thrown into isolation mode and protection mode if you go to a website that's, uh, that's, that's insecure. So that's the wide variety of technologies that are out there right now that you can use to deploy your network. Now, why go over that? Well, it's because everybody doesn't have every one of these technologies and every one of these technologies can be a check on the other. Like when you fly an airplane, you have multiple ways to measure airspeed, altitude, and, and uh, direction. When you run a large network that has to be compliant, that you have to demonstrate that you're, uh, you've done due care on it, you want to make sure that your vulnerability management pro program is not blind. You want to make sure that you know people haven't installed things on your network that you're not supposed to, that you didn't know about. So you have to have multiple ways to measure these things. And I highly recommend anybody who wants to look at Tenable. Obviously, I still think they're the leader in this, this space of bringing all these different kind of technologies together. But regardless of what your program is, you need to bring in scanning, agents, network monitoring, and some independent sources of vulnerability and asset data like the, the SBOMs, the Software Bill of Materials. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video in the 3D graphics. If you want to see more things like this, let me know over on LinkedIn or leave a comment here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Ron Gula. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good one.